Have you ever been concerned about your personal safety while you're out RVing? Stay tuned because we've got some really important tips with a special guest that's gonna help you be able to feel more safe as you're out there enjoying the RV life. Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, we invite you to go ahead and click that subscribe button so that you can get all of the notifications when we post new content. And we invite you to like this video and leave us a comment as well. Today, we wanted to talk to you about personal safety when it comes to RVing. There's been a lot of fear that's kind of been in the RV community lately due to just some things that have happened here in the United States with RVers. And um, when it comes to personal safety, there are just, you know, things that you want to make sure that you avoid. You don't want to put yourself in a situation that you feel is unsafe. And so what we wanted to do today is we wanted to give you some tips on things that you can do to ensure your personal safety as you are enjoying the RV lifestyle. So we are going to be joined by a, a special guest today who's going to give us some tips on personal safety for RVers and campers. So I am here with Officer Robert Brannon and we are at beautiful Boyd Lake State Park here in the northern Colorado area and I'm just going to give a little plug if your travels plan on taking you through northern Colorado this is a wonderful state park to be able to camp at with your RV, travel trailer, tent, however that you choose to camp. But we were having a wonderful conversation in your office earlier about some steps that people can take when they're RV camping or tent camping to just keep themselves safe and secure to where you don't have to you know, have any sort of fear of anything happening, but just practical steps. So do you want to share with us what some of those steps are that you suggested? Because they're awesome suggestions. Yeah, thank you, Charity. Um, so I think one of the main things, and you guys do a great job of emphasizing this in your other videos, is the importance of planning ahead. Um, and that really takes place in safety as well, which is, you know, planning ahead to know where you're going to be, uh, what are the first responders that are going to be in that area. For example, if you're going to be camping in a state park like ours, we do have state park rangers here, but we also have Larimer County Sheriff's Office, which is our also a first responder. So that would be uh, the non-emergency phone number you would call if you needed assistance and you weren't able to get a hold of a ranger. So planning ahead to know where you are and who you're going to need to call if you did need help in a situation is important. Um, another important thing for planning ahead is knowing your social media and maybe not posting where you're going to be ahead of time. Uh, if you're going to be away from your home for an extended period of time, people can use that public information on social media to potentially do something at your house while you're away. So posting on after you leave or after you get back from a trip is a good way to uh, protect yourself from that kind of thing. Another good step for safety here is, is to know your legal protections as far as while you're camping. Um, know your area and what legal protections you are permitted as far as defending your property um, when you're set up in a camper or an RV. Another point that we talked about was potentially not advertising when and where you're leaving um, when you're full-time camping, whether your vehicle is a trailer with a tow vehicle that you can leave your trailer and drive off. It can be pretty obvious to other people in the area whether or not you're at your campsite. Um, so the importance of maybe locking up every time you leave, even if it's just going to be a short trip. That way no one has the opportunity to sneak into your RV, that kind of thing while you're yeah. gone. And one thing too, I want to just talk to, with you about again, is that you had a great suggestion about if you are RVing in say like a motor home where you don't have a tow vehicle, um, share with us kind of some of the things that you were talking about with being able to be mobile um, on a moment's notice if you need to. So. Right. Yeah. You never know what's going to happen in any kind of emergency situation. It can be important to be able to pick up and go at a moment's notice. Um, so if you are in an RV without a second vehicle, it might be a good idea to think about maybe not using those levelers, not using those jack stands, not using those awnings. That way, if you do need to pull up and go, it can be a more of a quick thing where you don't have to take all that stuff down before you hit the road. And I think that's especially important for people that do choose boondocking. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of RVers and a lot of campers do enjoy boondocking. It is a great way to be able to kind of, you know, get out a little bit. Uh, but in those types of situations, if for some reason you were to run into an emergency or something, I think especially in those boondocking situations that that would be very critical. Mm -hmm. And I think that goes into planning ahead too, you know, knowing if you had to pick up and go, you know, where's the nearest hospital? Or am I going to have phone service where I'm out boondocking? That kind of thing and planning ahead for those situations to know, you know, do I have a satellite phone or another option to get help if I need it? 
Yeah, no, those are great suggestions. Share with me a little bit about some of the suggestions that you had, um, especially because there are a lot of solo female campers um, that have you know chosen this lifestyle, which is a wonderful lifestyle. But for maybe somebody that is a solo female camper, what tips do you have for somebody in that situation? Um, so I think uh, dogs are great. It's they're, they're great companions <laughs> on the road. It's good to have a co-pilot and a friend. Um, if it's not possible to actually have a dog for your situation, then maybe just putting out a dog bowl by the door, um, putting out maybe a few extra pairs of shoes by the door, some boots, something to indicate that maybe you're not the only one there and um, that it's not as much of an opportunity and people might not see you as vulnerable that way. So tell us a little bit about how the camp hosts can actually play into keeping us safe. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, most of the parks you visit, if you're staying in a, a developed campground like ours, will have camp hosts. And what they do is they exchange in exchange for some volunteer hours. They, are, they stay in the park uh, as, as long as they can, um, usually for a season. And I'd say as far as safety goes, they're a real great resource because they live in the park. Uh, they know the campground probably better than anybody, and especially from the perspective of someone who's living in an RV, which other park staff might not be as familiar with because they're actually out here doing it. So I would encourage people if they are staying in a campground that has camp posts to take advantage of that, go talk to them. They're happy to talk to people. That's why they're out here doing it anyway. So they'll be excited to talk to you and share things about the park and also be able to give you some tips about personal safety. So Robert, tell us another reason why that, you know, just getting to know the camp host is a great idea. Yeah, I think having the camp host, cause they're really going to be your neighbors while you're staying in the campground and you can rely on them for some stuff like that. You know, maybe if you're not going to be at your campsite for a couple of days, you can let them know so they can keep a closer eye on your stuff and make sure there aren't people coming and going from your site when you're not there. Yeah, uh, and I think that's a great idea. I know that even some of the areas that we've been in, you know, you is an RV or you kind of think about your base, right? And mm -hmm. where you want to be as far as, okay, here's where we're going to base ourselves out of for the next week or the next two weeks. But there could be some things that are maybe, you know, a hundred mile drive or something that are close enough to the area that you want to go see that just makes more sense to do it in an overnight trip. So you choose to leave your rig there and, you know, you lock it, of course. But I think that that is a wonderful suggestion of just being able to you know, check in with those camp hosts and say, hey, just so you know, and know that you've got an extra set of eyes. I think it's important that people take advantage of that resource because they really have a perspective of being in the community, staying in the campground, and from the point of view of another full-time RVer, and they will be able to have some tips and tricks that'll not only tell you, you know, places that might be fun to go visit or some hidden gyms in the area, but also places to possibly avoid out of, you know, a sense of personal safety. And, you know, they enjoy talking to people. That's why they're out here doing it. So I'd encourage people to take advantage of that and you know go make a relationship with the camp hosts where they're staying yeah no that's great i love that and just a thought for some of you that are looking to reduce costs if you're a full-time rver uh, being a camp host is a great way to do that isn't it yeah absolutely and it's a great way to really get to stay in a community for a longer period of time especially if you have friends or family in the area and you are doing the full-time rv lifestyle it's a good opportunity to maybe set down roots for a little bit uh, before you hit the road to your next stop so that was an absolute wonderful uh, interview that we had with Officer Robert Brannon, who had a wonderful amount of tips for us and some things that we didn't even think about before that we had a chance to talk to him. I did want to share with you one of our personal experiences that we had that actually kept us safe while we were RVing. And that is to do some checking in some of the local social media groups or some of the RV forums online and talk to people that are in a specific area about maybe where that you should stay if you're planning on visiting that area. What happened for us is that we wanted to visit the St. Louis area. And so we started looking for campgrounds that we wanted to stay at. We talked to some people that were in that local area via social media, and they told us that the East St. Louis area was a little bit sketchy and not really a place that you would want to stay with your family if you were campers. So we chose to stay somewhere that was not in the East St. Louis area, but we stayed somewhere else in the St. Louis area and had a wonderful time visiting St. Louis. Well, it was very interesting that we saw just recently another vlogger shared their experience where they didn't have that information ahead of time and they booked a campground in the East St. Louis area. And as they're in their campground going to bed at night, they're listening to gunshots being fired. So using Facebook groups or social media groups, online forums is a great way to talk to people and ask about specific areas and different places that you may want to avoid if you're booking a campsite in that area and places that you would want to stay when you're booking a campsite in that area. 
Another tip for personal safety is to make sure that you do have that point of contact that you're always keeping in contact with. When you're full-timing or even if you're part-timing, it's good to let someone know exactly where you're going to be and when that they should expect to hear from you next. Having that local point of contact or just a point of contact in general can help you out if for some reason they don't hear from you, then they are alerted that there could be a potential concern and that they can get help on the way if that's what's needed. As always, common sense really is the best sense to have. If you don't have a good feeling about a particular area that you've stopped in, or if you're looking for a boondocking site and you just aren't sure or feel a little bit uneasy, then it's probably a good idea to move on to a different area or a different site if you just don't have a sense of peace about that particular area. So thank you so very much for joining us for this video about personal safety and steps that you can take as an RVer or camper to ensure your personal safety while you get out and enjoy some of the wonderful areas that are out here. There are a lot of wonderful, nice, natural areas out there, and some of them may even be in your own backyard. Absolutely. So get out there with your family and really just enjoy the state parks and campgrounds in your area. And state parks are a wonderful option. And just kind of like Officer Brandon shared with us too, is that a lot of the state parks will have some sort of, you know, either law enforcement presence or some sort of just security type of presence to where state parks can be a wonderful place that you can stay and get out in nature still, um, but really just enjoy the outdoors. You know, state State parks could maybe also possibly be a good alternative to boondocking because a lot of people that boondock boondock yeah. because they want to be you know more out in nature yeah and so if you're at a state park then that really is you know it's it's a good way to kind of meld nature with your you know full hookups or you know yeah. whatever some state parks you know might just have water and electric or whatever but i think that you know if you don't feel safe boondocking or you're concerned about safety while boondocking or something like that, but you want to feel like that you're more camping versus just, you know, you're kind of, you know, more commercialized type campground, I guess, for lack of a better term, that a state park could be a really good alternative to that from a safety aspect as well. Right, plus you get the added bonus of most state parks are actually less expensive than a regular campground, like a KOA or, um, different type of campground like that so yeah, yeah and we've stayed in several state parks haven't we yeah definitely most of them are clean well kept they all have camp hosts very happy with state parks one last plug is if you do choose to visit a state park make sure that you are paying the fees that you need to pay a lot of state parks are funded um, with those fees and they do just help to keep the employees compensated that are there for your safety but also to keep the grounds improved and things like that plus a lot of state parks or even national parks are owned by the people that either live in that state or if it's a national park they're owned by every citizen of the united states and so this is really your land and we want to do everything we can to be responsible and to take care of the lands that have been entrusted to us well thanks for watching our video hit the subscribe button below uh, that's the best compliment that you can give our channel and let us know that we're providing you great content so we would also encourage you to leave a comment let us know if you have any tips that you take or steps you take for personal safety while you're out on the road we will be sharing some of these in the weeks to come in our Facebook group with others so that everybody can kind of collaborate and talk about different tips that they take for personal safety. So we'll put a link below to our Facebook group as well, and we encourage you to come check that out, and we'll be sharing some more tips for personal safety in the weeks to come. Nail to image. No. <laughs> no. Like a gun, you don't want to do that. Yeah. You could do like. Just hands! Just hands. Wait, did you see that? Yeah. It's a state park. <laughs> Behind there. All right. There really are a lot of nice natural areas, aren't there? Absolutely. <laughs>